Google Assistant accessibility videos, setting up a Google Home with a screen reader, requires compatible devices. I am Kiran Kaja, and I am the accessibility lead for Search and Assistant. In this video, I will demonstrate how easy it is to set up a Google Home using a screen reader. Google Home is a smart speaker powered by the Google Assistant. You can ask it questions or have it do things for you, such as turn on the AC or play your favorite music and much, much more. You can do all of this just by using your voice. The Google Home connects to your Wi-Fi network, so you need your Wi-Fi password handy during setup. For this demo, I'm using an iPhone 8 running the voiceover screen reader, but you can also use an Android smartphone to set up your Google Home. You'll need the Google Home app for setup. You can download the Google Home app on your iPhone from the App Store. On your Android smartphone, you can download it from the Google Play Store. When you plug in the Google Home to a power outlet, it takes a few seconds to power up. You will hear an audio tone and a voice prompt when it's ready for setup. I will use the Google Home app on my iPhone from here on. Get started. I will activate the Get Started button. You'll need to have a Google account, which is typically a Gmail account, to set up the Google Home. I already have a Google account on this phone, so I'm going to just use that. If you don't have a Google account, you can create one here by activating the Create Account link. This screen lets you choose a household. For instance, if you are setting up the Google Home at your place, you might want to call your household home. If you are setting up Google Home at your parents' place, you might want to call it parents. You can later on add more devices to the household. I will continue with my current household for now. That brings us to the Home tab. This is where Google Home and all the other supported devices such as Chromecast, any smart lights, will show up when you add them. You can control them from here as well. There are a number of ways to set up the Google Home. The best way with the screen reader I found is to go to the Account button in the bottom right corner. Then navigate to Setup Device button and activate it. We are back at the household screen. I will continue with my current home, so I will double tap the next button. A Google Home device was detected and seems to have been selected for us. So I will double tap the next button. Connecting to Google Home Max. Exit setup button. Did you hear the sound? Heading. I think I definitely heard it. I will try again just in case. Try again. This is to confirm that you are indeed setting up your own device and not a neighbor's. I'm going to double tap the yes button. I'd like to help improve, so I'm going to double tap yes to say I am in. You can select a room for your Google Home. You don't have to, but assigning a room makes you do useful things such as play music in the living room or bedroom only. This is really useful if you're likely to have more than one Google Home device. I'm going to select living room. Selected, living room. I'll just go ahead with that name, but you can also change it to something else. For example, you can name your Google Home Big Speaker, and so you'll be able to say things like, Hey Google, play BBC on the big speaker. Choose your Wi-Fi network. I'll pick the Wi-Fi Colab Aurora here and select Next. Connecting to Wi-Fi. Heading. In order to make full use of your Google Home device, it's recommended that you set up your Google Assistant with your Google account. This helps you ask a wide range of questions, access your calendar entries, and play personalized music. What's the first video in this series to learn more about the Google Assistant? I'm going to select Next. Teach your assistant to recognize your voice. Your assistant on the Google Home can identify you with your voice and give you personalized results. It can recognize up to six different voices, so your family members can also get personalized results. I'm going to select I agree. This is where you train your Google Assistant to recognize your voice. You do this by speaking the phrases OK Google and Hey Google. VoiceOver on the iPhone and TalkBack on Android will guide you through the process. Instead of saying, repeat the phrase, OK Google, they will say, repeat the phrase, starting with OK. Note that you'll be able to set up voice match later on through assistant settings, so you can skip this step for now if you like. Now that your Google Assistant can identify you with your voice, you can have it return personal results only when it recognizes your voice. This includes calendar entries and shopping, for example. I'm going to go select the View More button. I'm going to select I Agree. For some languages, there are multiple assistant voices available. Select a voice that you like best. 
You can also play a sample of that voice on the screen. I will choose Allow. Entering your address helps you with a number of things, such as finding local shops and restaurants, ordering an Uber, and so on. You can edit the address if the automatically detected one is incorrect. In my case, it is the correct address, so I'm going to continue. You can link any of your music subscription services to the Google Assistant. For example, you can link your YouTube Premium or Spotify or Pandora accounts. And then you can use your voice to play music from these services on your Google Home. If you have a Chromecast connected TV, you can also link video services such as YouTube and Netflix to your Google Assistant. This screen displays a few optional things you can do such as set up your caller ID information. In some countries, you'll be able to make free phone calls using the Google Home. You'll now go through a quick tutorial. Activate the Continue button. Hi, I'm your Google Assistant. I'm here to help. To learn a few things you can do, continue in the Google Home app. I'll activate Finish Setup, and that's it. Your Google Home is now set up and ready to use. Let's give this a try. Hey Google, what can you do? Here are some suggestions. You can say, play Lucky Trivia, or when are the Stanley Cup playoffs? Do you want a couple more ideas? No. Sure. By the way, you can always ask, what can you do? You can also see more examples in the Google Home app. The Google Home can perform over 1 million actions. A quick and easy way to find out what the Google Home can do is to ask, what can you do? You will get different options each time you ask this question. For more ways your assistant can help you in your daily life, please check out the rest of the videos in this series linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and I do hope you find these videos useful. We'd love to hear from our users. If you have questions, comments, or feedback on the accessibility of your assistant, the Google Home, or any other Google product, please contact our Disability Support Desk by emailing disability-support at google.com. You can also tweet us at Google Access. For a complete list of all the Google accessibility support options, please visit support.google.com slash accessibility.